Hello, it's Teresa here from South East London. I hope you're all well. And I'd just like to say a very, very happy 2021 to you all. And I wish you all good health and lots of luck and best wishes for this coming year. We're going to do a refresher video. There are eight stitches, basic stitches that we use, not just the traditionally thought of running stitch. We incorporate others as well. I'd like to keep this video <laughs> quite short, um, but we'll see how that pans out because I've said that before and an hour and a half later, I'm saying goodbye. So we'll just see, we'll just see. Hang fire on that for a minute. Well, before we make a start, I'm just going to do our housekeeping. And I'd like to say um, thank you to you all for watching and for all the new subscribers and I'd like to thank Mariella Altieri, Anne Croats, Francine de Klerk, Brigitte Bell, Johanna Robson or Joanna Robson, Miroslava Hamzagic, Gri oh I'm really sorry about this Griannon 6D, Steve Webb, who I believe is actually the husband or the partner of Myra L from the USA. Have I got that right, Myra? You'll have to correct me if I haven't, and apologies if I haven't. Carolyn Hamilton, Claire Rogers, Raylin Refrushini, Judith P., Annie's M, Therese Singrinelli. Therese, I hope that 46 inches of snow that you all has over there has um going. Goodness, I was shocked. I saw that on the BBC News as it was happening and I couldn't believe it. Back to the Nickel Nook. Oh, that's Nancy. The Nickel Nook Nancy. Emma Sakitha Johnson. Frida Diggle, Glenn Leader, Janelle 2000, Nancy Amorin, Kathy Martin, Kath Avalon, Mamie Jean One, Tylus Eight, Drew Cabral, The Nest, Reb Lord, Mitzi Z, Robbie Lambregetz, Morena Constantini, Junk Journals with Gina B, Anne S, Cynthia Black, Susan Parker, Jill Rushk, Cindy Click, Tim Brent, Jess Chi, Cooper H. Cooper TH, Debbie Brown, Christy Lopez, Sandra. Peterson, Shamila Das and Helen Duro. Big welcome to you all and I'm really sorry if I've mispronounced your names. You'll have to um, tell me how to pronounce them. So back to our project. We're going to make another stitch book. Now the last one we did was way back at the beginner's course and it was a very tiny book like this a little square book and it just had an instruction piece and a stitch this time we're going to make something a bit more substantial but it's not one you can keep in your pocket because it is 10 inches by six inches and we're just going to do a quick flip through of my stitch book so you can get an idea of what we'll be doing for your book. All the stitches in this book are the stitches that we use for our slow stitch projects. So none of them will be new. They'll all be things that you've done before. Now we have cross stitch here and some pinwheels. Cross stitch here, slow stitch, running stitch. Um, we've got the same here, lots of cross stitches. That's a plique. I actually took the 
I actually took that out from the front of a Christmas cushion. My di my daughter didn't even notice that the H was missing from Christmas. How worrying is that? The E there, um, that I think uh, is all slow stitch. Blanket stitch around here and some slow stitch and pinwheels. Lots of things going on here. We have herringbone stitch running stitch pinwheels again this this here is actually uh, we've used it before a little piece of fabric that is like a ladder it looks like a ladder and I've just woven into the ladder and I've put the the, uh, the ladder the finished ladder if you like on some felt and here we have the pinwheel on felt and that stitches is obviously printed all on a hessian background and mounted onto the front of the book now we need to make the book first but we'll do that after a very quick flip through so now bear in mind these books or this one in particularly is for reference it's primarily a reference book and i and mine is actually an ideas book as well the running stitch and it's the, the low stitch which forms the basis of all our projects now I've used this as the basis of this of course I've exaggerated the shape this is computer generated I played about on the computer for that something here a wire part of a wire fencing which reminds me of diamond shape basic diamond shapes here and on this page we have the running stitch how to do the running stitch and how to lace through it as well very easy and as I say there's nothing in here to worry about we've done it all before so we have how to do it a little practice piece and playing around with it the plain pieces here on the pages are for you to mark down your notes so that is the first one running stitch the second page is pinwheels I love pinwheels so each page has the same format we have how to do it the little diagram there and we have an example of doing it and over here we have a little play around to see what effect you can get well as I said my inspiration is here taken from here the circles reminded me of flowers and it's just so if ever I get stuck for an idea <laughs> I can flick through and think oh well, I know what I do I'll do a piece of work based on flowers and I think I'd use the pinwheels so there's some ideas already going on here so that's that page it's very journal style this next one is the herringbone stitch exactly the same format you'll see the format on all the pages and this is vintage this must be about 40 years old I've taken it off of something and on here you can't see it on the screen on here some very old herringbone stitch around these circles now the feather stitch same layout some words I like words as well once again for notes I'm just quickly going to go through this now the French knots now I liked this and I was very influenced actually by Rene Macintosh this is vintage as well from an old portfolio that I have and that's all French knots and that is actually a tree bark another flower which I felt looked like French knots so exactly the same format once again here we go cross stitch a little bit of embroidery that I found tucked away somewhere cross stitch flowers and all these cross stitches which reminded me of these flowers here the pinwheel here and I just love this I love all these tulips here and the colours and the roundness which to me suggested pinwheels and this is a little bit of a plique here ribbon I've used herringbone a running stitch slow stitch cross stitch 
and the French knots and there's some nice feather stitch there needle weaving now we have touched on needle weaving before and it's something I hope that we do a little bit more of this is little bits of experimentation in with the picture of the trees and that is another that's a picture like collage that I've done there um, like that and once again lots of space here to make notes that that is actually the practice piece I got these pages around the, the wrong way but I don't think it really notices does it and I've just put these trees here for added effect this chain stitch one, um, Lazy Daisy. Now I've done the Lazy Daisy because Lazy Daisy is very, very effective. And all it is, is single chain stitches. So this is telling you how to do the chain. If you just take one stitch from the chain, like so, you get the Lazy Daisy. And now this, reminded me of this the petals you can see the round curves here uh, probably better on that one here you've got the curves one the purple one the white one pink one the outline there of the white and it's all suggestive i think of a semicircle now the card that i'm using for yours is 12 inches that way by 8 here 12 by 8 and there are five pieces of card now you don't have to use pretty pretty card like this because bearing in mind it will be covered up I have these pieces of card here and I'm just going to show you how to do this by hand on something this small I'm going to use um, three, uh, three holes. So with my alb here, I want a nice sharp instrument, evenly space them. I'm just going to do that by eye, and you're going to make holes right the way through. So middle, and then we'll come up here and we do one there, and then back here. Now, this is called a signature. Okay, now we're going to hold these together, make sure they all marry up with a big needle, nice big eye, blunt, nice blunt needle and some st string, yarn, ribbon, something nice and strong. You're going to go through the middle hole here, okay, now you're going to make sure it doesn't you don't pull it through the whole lot so hold your thumb down there okay Mizzle, so you've now gone from the back or the front it doesn't matter and you're going to go now go through the top one whoa that's tough you're still holding the thread at the back okay now you can go back through that hole or you can bypass that hole i'm going to bypass it because this ribbon is very thick so we're now going to find the other hole the third hole down here go in there pull that through now at this point it's beginning to twist a little bit because the ribbon is quite thick. There we go. Okay, and we're going to go in here. Well, now we're going to go through the middle hole. Oh, that is thick. Good grief. That's it. Round this way. And one piece of ribbon either side of the center spine of the spine over that ribbon there and we're going to knot it nice knot and then you can tie it as you wish so there you have another little notebook ready for your stitches 
or for notes or for whatever you want to do. You could get a little tiny journal, couldn't you? And that. If the sewing machine won't go through my card there, this is what I shall be doing. But it's quite nice, isn't it? I'll put that to one side. We might see that again soon. Now, because yours is going to be slightly different to mine, I thought in this one, before I sew it together, I might just add a few pictures for inspiration. So I've taken these, once again, nature, but yours could be anything. Yours could be The problem with this is that by doing it this way, you will be splitting up the pages. Where I had two pages, one with the diagram of how to do the, the stitch and then the example, then over here I had the fun practice piece. You will have something in the middle. So it's up to you if that's what you want. So I like that one, so I put that one there. Then you could have this for notes. Um, actually, that would I think that one might be best in the middle. We we'll have the note paper in the middle. You can make notes. This little page here was too long for this. So what I've done, I've added that and slow stitched it. But what I've done here, I folded in the piece that was too long. So it's like a little pocket now to put something in there and I just added blanket stitch here and some slow stitch here just for decoration that's the blanket stitch there you see I caught that stitch there so I can pop that in as well I think I might pop this in there lots of pretty flowers there we go I'm not going to use that one now if the machine won't take it because this is now very thick I will do I'll, I will um, sew them together like I did this one alright so it remains to be seen now how I'm going to put those together so they're all nicely folded in half they're all lined up and they're ready to sew now, I so I did manage to machine sew it it went all the way through oh, can you see that how lovely and neat that looks in the center so it's a proper little booklet now if you see I'll just quickly flip through it so here we go and I think that was quite a right decision to put that in there and the colors blend lovely so that's your inspiration decided not to put one there there's part of the tree one with a little bit of a plique there that I put in some more inspiration and you see how nice and neat it looks here how lovely the pages look oh that was a bit stiff there and there's the page with the pocket little pocket there with the blanket stitch along the edge the bit turned back here and the running stitch the slow stitch Ooh. and here last page some lovely inspiration there with those beautiful leaves so we're ready now to decorate the first page our first page is running stitch because that forms the basis of all our projects and is the slow stitch part although any stitch can be slow stitch the same layout in my book we have the description here and a, a practical piece there so what I've done I have taken I photocopied from a very old book a book that's out of print now so it's quite a right to do this I have photocopied all the stitches that we use now there is a public domain Google books public domain and all the books in this on this site 
are out of date that if you can get to the sewing books you might be lucky enough um, I've done it you might be lucky enough to find stitches and if they're out of date that means they're very old and some of the pages are absolutely gorgeous so that is the public domain have a look there if you're worried about breaking copyright next step then I'll put that over there I have mounted this on a piece of card just to give it a little bit of a oomph and I've matched the card to this here just to marry the pages together because you can see the top of it there and what I've done oh gosh I went back to the little notebook and look I cut a piece, that piece off there isn't that awful so I've cut that off there stuck it down and now I'm just going to pop that down here with some nice strong paper glue so put that there ish you can pop it wherever you like it doesn't have to be in the middle it could be off to the side it could be upside down doesn't matter it's your work no one's going to say to you that's wrong can't be wrong not if you've designed it and it's yours so underneath here that is where we put our example so running stitch you all know what running stitch is um, I'm going to do it in lemon so which way should we do it do it this way it doesn't really matter now I've put a knot in there now when I finish it's a loose knot I shall wiggle that free or I shall leave a bit hanging and cut that off because if you have lots of knots or a knot when you glue it down you're going to get a bump there but you do need to knot it really so running stitch we all know what that is in right I'm sitting at an angle again it's very uncomfortable right in and out in and out right so that is just your oh that's not straight is it that is just your, your running stitch so just come over here now when you do this just play around with it make some marks experiment this is your this is your little notebook your own private reference book for stitches so you you sit and play around and see what effects that you can come up with right i'm only going to do two at the moment well probably only two those right and then at the back I just tie that off just loosely because I'm going to glue it anyway so the glue will hold any loose ends in place so cut that there now that is the running stitch okay now we're going to lace it and we're going to do that well I'm going to pop just pop another same thing here just a row or maybe two Let's we're see. going to come in from the back and just as the picture shows we're just going to go over the two ways there to do it we're just going to come in from underneath in it's a bit like weaving and then up And don't pull it too tightly otherwise you'll lose the nice curve there but don't leave it too loose either otherwise it you'll be able to pull it it get caught on things so we're just going up and down here we're just coming down at the moment we've been up and down you see how that's taking shape already right so this is lacing it so we're down there and now we're just going to come up here not pull it too tightly and then oh what am i doing oh dear oh i must have nodded off then uh, and into that tiny little piece there there we go 
and into the back. Now I'm going to go over here and do the same. So, right, now I'm not going to do the same, I'm going to do the other way of doing it. So, from there over to there, okay, so you're getting a loop there. Wouldn't be obviously, it's not going to be so big and chunky on a um, smaller example. So over there, don't pull it too tightly, and then over there. So the other one, you're, you're just twisting it through in and out, in and out. But here, you're doing just a little bit more by just taking it from one stitch to the other. There you go. Can you see the difference there? Smash in, pull that into shape a little bit, and then knot it off here. It. Now, I might actually do this as I did mine and machine sew them. In fact, I think I probably will. So, but I'm just showing you how you can do yours. Okay. And that is your first page. Obviously, give that time. Yeah, I think I might, um, the glue stick will hold it. Now the fabric you use, you might not want to use what I've used, this Hessian, this scrim. My mum used to buy this to clean her windows with, funnily enough. Um, you might have other fabric. If you have fabric that doesn't fray, then I wouldn't worry about neatening the edges. But because this frays really badly, I've neatened the edges. Now you can neaten it by hand with the over sewing stitch that we've done before. Just over like that all the way around to stop it fraying. Or if you have a sewing machine, you can zigzag it all the way around. I've zigzagged mine. These are three and a half inches by four inches. But once again, once you've made your booklet up, you might want to have big, bigger um, examples or smaller. Already I'm looking at the page here and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, that's plain, isn't it? Perhaps it does need a little bit of something to cheer it up. But that'll come at the end, okay? So I'm not going to do anything at the moment to embellish it, to make it prettier. So that page is finished. There's your reference for running stitch, how to do it, your practice piece, a little bit of inspiration. And now on this page will be your, your little play around, your own design to see what you come up with. Now I found this, this is something I did, it's all running stitch, a little bit of beadwork there. I might put that there and then Put some card there, glue some card there for notes. Yeah, I'm, yeah, that doesn't look too bad actually. And the colours, the orange here, actually goes with that. This is Binka. So I think I'm going to use this on this page here. And I will probably machine sew that as well. And glue that. Okay, and then we'll start the next this, page. I've machine okay. sewn that around, but you can you can glue them down. And then we have this page here, and then the practical piece, the play around piece, or the experiment, if you like. And that is my experimental piece for the running stitch. Now yours will probably be different. I'm pleased I put this in, although it does break up the continuity at the moment between the pages ideally those pages should be like that side by side so you're taking it all in at one go instructions uh, finished piece so you know what you're looking for and then your own experimental piece here 
and then an area for notes but because I've now put that in <laughs> I've broken that up so what I've decided to do is use these use these as working pages these pages are far from finished now when I say I started out with the idea just to have a very informative little reference book but it's taken on a life of its own it's almost turning into a journal now now i'm trying very hard to stop it going off into the journal i want it specifically on stitches how to do the stitches a little bit of sketching a little bit of sketching for you just so you get the hang of how to do these stitches but already it's saying no no add this add that so I've been listening to that voice and I have indeed added some more pieces this is running stitch now this is the laced running stitch um, I'm going to I've already put the double-sided tape on that there we go so that's going to go there might leave these tails long not sure yet now all this is or was is an inch strip oh my goodness an inch strip of fabric as long as your your book and it's roughly let me actually measure it um it's oh it's actually two two point five centimeters so yes that's exactly an inch and it's rows of running stitch just uh, what five one two three four five five maybe six rows of running stitch here and they were all evenly spaced and then they're laced like this so it's that stitch in there that is the lace one now I looked at that and I thought oh need something there but not yet I did actually make this one to go there and then I thought no I think this one will go here once again it's already got double-sided um, sticky tape on it now what I did I actually mounted these two on strips of card little strips of card exactly the same size as this I mounted it on that pressed it flat and that is why they're lying nice and flat because they're actually on card and it makes it so much easier to fit them in so then I've looked at that still not finished and it won't be finished until I decide what to do here I found this I went into um, my craft um, cupboard to get some wool out and I came across a box of stuff that I had forgotten about this is several years old and believe it or not now where am I going to put this um, I'm going to put this here because I'll show you what I'm going to put there this is part of the Eiffel Tower several years ago I went to um, uh, Paris with my friend Joe, and it was such an emotional thing to see the Eiffel Tower um, and stand under it it was absolutely beautiful and for anybody who hasn't been to Paris it really is the place of romance it's absolutely beautiful um, and since then I've been back a couple of times with my daughter and we just love it it's if you get the chance to go it's just fabulous it really is it's an inspiration it's one of those places that's an inspiration and if you like the impressionist then um, and you go to Montmartre which is just on the outside well it's in Paris but it's just on the edge if you like um, it's just full of inspiration you can just feel it and you you just want to do some sketching and you just want to to soak up all this inspiration and this creativity it's um, really motivational if for people like us who are very creative um, it's just wonderful just wonderful anyway that is the bottom of the Eiffel Tower and of course it just stretches up here um, you don't want to see what that is it just stretches right the way up here like the biggest pylon in the world <laughs> although it's really it's one even bigger now so Eiffel Tower now we need to know that this notebook journal sketch pad 
whatever you're going to call yours is basically about slow stitch about the stitches we use in our course in our coursework so i've made this and i did this in my journal if you if you remember oh see i'm calling it a journal i did this in my book i just thought that would be a nice touch i'm not even sure if that's there you go so now we know at a glance when you open that up Oh, this is about slow stitch. And all this here is running stitch. That's all running stitch. A little bit of couch in here just to break the running stitch up. But it's all running stitch with herringbone stitch there, which we'll be doing shortly. So it's all stuff, all stitches that you've done before. Now, this still isn't finished. I'm going to go as far as I can and then at the end I'll creep back and just tidy up the pages again and finish them. Done. The notes, but I have a feeling that the note bit might even be um, covered up. But you could always, if you wanted yours as a journal or a notebook, you could always cut paper and cover this up if you wanted to. It, as I keep saying, it's up to you. You can make notes along here if you wanted. So that one is not finished, but we will return. Now the next stitch is herringbone stitch, my favourite. And that is running stitch. And it wasn't until I stuck it down and I thought, it looks as if it's falling from the tree. Um, I thought, oh, that's silly. That's running stitch. That should have been on the running stitch page. But hey-ho, who really cares? Don't, don't over tighten your knot just leave it like that and that's nice and loose nice long needle darning needle with a big eye you need the big eye to take the thick thread and it's it's pointed but it's not sharp and a blunt one will do nicely so look at that so that is nice it's nice to handle as well so if you have problems with your hands sometimes i i've got arthritis in my my um, right side and just occasionally um it goes to this hand unfortunately and makes things like picking up kettle very difficult and as i i'm constantly drinking coffee yeah, it's really difficult. <laughs> it's a hard life when you can't get your caffeine down your throat quickly but anyway, today, no problem. Now, we do start this herringbone stitch. Now, we're going to come in from there. And any of you cross stitches, you'll recognise this. It's very similar to cross stitch. Now, once again, I'm doing this big for the sake of the camera. So, at a slant here, then you're going to hold that down. with your, Just like this, hold that down. And then you're keeping your needle that way now i don't say left and right because of those of you who are left-handed right-handed it gets confusing so keep a needle that way hold the thread down and then you just pull it and then you can move your your thumb you see that so you've come that way and across just a little way across and then you're going to take it down so you're now crossing it and you're going to do similar, oops, this way, down the bottom, right, you run it parallel there. Now you're going to hold the thread down this side of the needle and pull it. And there you go, that's your second one. And this is all you're going to do, you're just going to keep repeating that stitch and it's a beautiful stitch there you go cross it and thread down that side and out we go now when you're doing your textile art you don't have to keep to the rules like this you can cross your stitches wherever you like and you can make some long and some short but for the sake of this demonstration i'm not doing that because it's going to go in there uh, and it's just going to um affirm what's up here 
okay so I'm going to pop that to one side and off camera I will set I will glue that down so I just stick that there now the example this is the example and the example will go over here it's one of those pages again where there needs to be some sort of continuity on this page I think and on this page to marry the the um, instructions here with the practical piece here now this piece will go there and this is the inspiration the inspiration will go there now the inspiration let me have a look as you know people who follow me I, I like to have inspiration um, I'm not too good oh look <laughs> excuse me I'm gonna make you dizzy now close your eyes for a minute uh, I've moved everything there close your eyes that's it yeah I like to have inspiration I like to work preferably from nature um, I love nature you can't go wrong with nature so this these are dried or oh, not dried these are grasses um, a little picture there and there and it's all straggly it's all over the all over the place and when I looked at it I immediately thought of all oh, herringbone stick and I think if I say so myself it's been captured really well up here you see this bit here with a little bit of black which is the black bit round here and I think that's been captured really well so those two will go there now I'm not going to bore you and stick them down on the camera um, I'm not going to do that I'm going to do that afterwards so that is what I'm going to do so the herringbone that bit will go in there then this will go there and that will go there now the pages aren't finished I'm just these are overlapped there's long ones and there's short ones um, there's woolen ones thick ones against thin ones to give it a texture if you can just so even if you can't fully see the texture, you can hear it. So the texture is there. I chose the colours to marry or to match the colours here. The nicest thing about that stitch as well, or one of the nice things, is that you get the shapes in between the stitches. Now these shapes, you could actually put beads in them or French knots. As far as I've got with the herringbone, and I will stick them down as I said off camera right the next stitch is feather stitch so I'm going to start with the the sample here and this is a gorgeous stitch to do right so we're going to start here um, hang on a minute let's see which way I want that round hmm Oh, I don't know that gives a nice shape there doesn't it to put yeah I'm going to put it that way that gives a nice shape there and not only that it actually follows the line it's a long stitch stretching down so I'll have it the same way so once again the same rule applies a nice loose knot in the back the same needle and the wall wall all for demonstration purposes so we're going to come in from the back like so okay now it's up to you how wide you have your stitch for demonstration I'm going to make mine quite wide so you can see what I'm doing so we come over to the side as level with where you went in so it's over here okay now it's up to you once again how long you make a stitch I'm going to make mine a chubby one so you're going to bring your needle out between these two points here wherever you however long you want your stitch so there we go look at that first stitch done how easy was that now we're going to repeat that so over here as wide as you want your stitch in you go and down as long as you want it 
and look at that see how easy that is how wonderful it's such a gorgeous stitch oh right over again here and down wherever you want it and pull it there we are and that is feather stitch and once again when you're doing your textile art your design work you can do short thin fat long you make the rules up yourself this is just how to do it in order to break the rules you have to know the rules so these are just the rules now it's up to you whether you break them all right feather stitch so that will go there once again i'm not going to glue these in on the camera it's just a waste of time when we could be doing something else so that will go there i'll probably make that a bit longer and then another one of those pages which i might possibly do something with that as well and that side and this is the example now this is a fern it's all what is it because we've already used running stitch and lacing i've done the center stem or center vein here in running laced running stitch and then the rest is just purely feather stitch we have some thick ones thick long stitches here against the finer smaller stitches here so there's what two strands there so that's tw actually 12 individual strands in the white ones against six in the rest so we have quite a nice contrast there so you can hear the texture so that is going to go there and this is the inspiration you see the fur the ferns there look how lovely these ferns are they just suggest feather stitch you sometimes when you look through a book or you see something you don't have to think about oh how am i going to do that what method or technique because it just shouts out do me in feather stitch should it be done in feather stitch so there you are and that will go there I, I thought we'd skip to stitch it didn't feel right so the the um stitch we skipped was blanket stitch and buttonhole stitch now they tend to people tend to think these are the same stitches but they're not blanket stitch and buttonhole stitch are completely different that's by the by we're going to do blanket stitch first thing we're going to do is a pinhole or a pinwheel I've actually drawn two circles here on the edge of your circle hold your thread down with your thumb like so okay you see that now find the center so the center is about there so take your needle into the center and then out at the side now if you want a nice wheel with evenly spaced or wide spokes then you need to bring your needle out at a short distance but if you want them all close together so you've got no gaps at all then you would bring your needle out right at the side i'm going to have spokes that are quite even um, widely spaced so from there you go back into the center and repeat again you see that hold the thread down now you hold the thread down because if you don't and just pull the needle you could knot your thread and cause a mess there you go so already it's taking shape back in underneath and out twist it round thumb down into the middle underneath and back out blanket stitch 
blanket stitch in the round. Now I'm going to squeeze one in there. Back in where we started. Knot it off at the back. Or not knot it off. Just secure it. Now because that's going to be glued in place, I'm not so worried about it wriggling free. And that knot will be undone. It but not at the moment <laughs> so that's the first one I'll do the second one off camera so that is blanket stitch in the round now this um, I put a line there for blanket yeah I'm going to do the blanket stitch here can you see that line there there's a little bit of a line going on there and one down there so I'm going to use the line as a guide right out through there on the line so the thread is actually sitting on the line hold the thread now with your thumb here and then you're going to space it as wide or as narrow as you want it and then bring your needle out where you want it how long you want it so we're going to bring it out there now that bit will be picked up later on if we were coming back that way. There you space it, or I should say hold the thread again. And then take your needle down on the line. There you go. Two, back on the line needle out length that you want it and this is blanket stitch i'll finish this off off camera now you can see you could make this decorative by turning that round that way and repeating that here yeah that goes there now here will be your completed piece and this is i'll get it that is the example stitch. The black thread is around here, is the running stitch, and it just gives it a little bit of definite, excuse me, definition. And we've got running stitch down here, and a few little cross stitches here. And this is the inspiration. Um, is that out the right way? Yeah, that is the inspiration, and I believe that they might be hollyhocks. So the black also represents the black pieces here. You see those. I've tried to get the shape. The shape. I started with the white one and then just filled in some of the gaps. Now they're not all round. If you look closely, you can see like here and here and here. They're not all they're not all round because I've squeezed them in and I think I've given them character. So they don't have to be round. In your work, you do what you want to do because it is about you and how you're expressing yourself. Look at, this, look at that. That's just a fraction of one there, tiny one there. Um, and some little cross stitches in the middle. Okay. Now, I'm going to pop that in as well. So that will go there somewhere. That will go there. I might actually have to cover up the bit for notes. I see how I get on with that. So the next page is French knots or our French knots. So we'll make a start on this immediately and get them out of the way. Because I think once the French knots are out of the way, you can relax. You can perhaps enjoy it so let's get these little monsters out of the way first exactly the same needle same thread loose knot in from the back now you're going to take your needle and all you're going to do is twist it around like that and take it back at the side of where you came in all the time holding that thread tightly all right holding it tightly gradually let go 
and there's your knot. How easy was that? Now it's looking very, very um, sticky uppy, prominent, because I am using two strands of thread so you can see it. So what, we, what do we do next? I can hear you shouting out, put your needle in. Right, so needle in. Oh, that is a long piece of thread. Needle in. Hold the thread down. So I normally don't go back into the same hole because it's so easy to pull the thread through. So we're going to repeat exactly what we did there. Thread round in and pull. Look at that. Look how easy that is. So you'll work out how to do it yourself in a way that suits you. This suits me, sort of fingers like that, over my, my finger here, twist it round and in. I'm going to do these really slow. So in from the back, okay. So I'm holding the thread between these two, the thumb and the finger, and I'm just going to take the needle and twist it. I'm not moving the thread at all, it's the needle, and then in. It's the needle that I'm moving and not the thread. Have a go with these because it's a brilliant stitch. I always think that these stitches look better in a group rather than individually they need to be in a group. So hold the thread it's the needle that's moving it's the needle that's twisting look at that so it's going round and in and that is all there is to it. There you go. So that will go there. I'm just going to cut that off a bit. There. That will go there. And the inspiration I've used for the next piece are, and I'm going to hold these up. If you can see, can you see that? Um, sort of pom pom type flowers. And this, this lovely beast, look, look at the French knots going on here. I think that is absolutely wonderful. Now this is the piece that I did. We had the French knots. This is chain stitch and a lazy daisy, which is single chain and French knots and I just think that is really really lovely it was such a pleasure to do this believe it or not it was a pleasure so that is the sketch if you like for French knots now these pages are far from finished and they, these will all be stuck down off camera so the next one we come to is cross stitch and to put the scissors there to hold the page down. Cross stitch is possibly most people's favourite. Um, I think most people start with cross stitch maybe maybe at school. Um, remember those needlework lessons? All oh, those awful, awful needlework lessons. And it was called needlework. And it was needlework. It wasn't art. It was definitely needlework and sitting there doing rows and rows of cross stitch and they all had to cross at the right place they all had to be the same length and go the same way I mean my goodness um, and it was all girls as well well when I was at school the girls did the needlework with these awful oh, cross stitch things and um, the boys went off and did really wonderful things with bits of wood and bits of metal and they were producing all this gorgeous stuff and the girls were producing school dresses and aprons and, oh my goodness, samplers. My goodness. So hopefully we've moved on since then. Let's start. Let's start with the stitches. So the cross stitches. Now having said all that, 
and I did say it earlier on, in order to break the rules, you have to know the rules. So we're going to do our cross stitches and it's very much like herringbone stitch for those of you who haven't done cross stitches before. So you come in from the back and you're going to make your crosses as big or as small as you want. Now for the sake of this I'm going to make these big. So there we go. Now you're working basically on a square shape. So if you follow your eye there, along there, along there, your needle has to come out there where these two meet. So we're going to come out here and take it over there and then we're going to bring it out again where these two meet which is, or take it in I should say, there. And there is your first cross stitch and we're going to do more of those. We're going to take it over there, down, out here and where they meet there. Now in your artwork it's up to you where you cross them and how long you make them. You don't have to stick to the rules. You could make one leg that size, that length, and you could make the other leg up there. Okay? Um, to make your texture, because don't forget we're involved with shape and texture, colour, composition, line. We're not making tea, tea cloths, so we've got an awful lot of freedom to be creative. And that is your cross stitch. There you go. So that is going to go there, somewhere there. Now, my sketch was based on this. These are my inspirations. Now, I'm, my inspiration. Goodness only knows what this is. If anybody recognizes that, please comment because look at <laughs> look at that monster. I have no idea what it is. All I know it was in this book of plants. It's probably a name to it, but I'm not sure whether it makes me feel a bit queasy or not looking at it. There's something about that that I really don't like. It's um makes me feel sick, if I'm honest. But anyway, it's a perfect cross. Look at that, a beautiful cross. If you can ignore that it's something that's living, it's a perfect cross. Here we go again. Now this is pretty. This is more my sort of thing. If I, there you go. You can see it better that way, can't you? That's more my sort of thing. Very pretty little flowers there. Um, and these are all little crosses. So that's the inspiration so i'm going to find a home for those here um, i'm not sure about that thing i really not but anyway say i'm going to mess around and put them there and then we have this page here which i'm going to possibly find another picture for ah that was the picture that i thought i might put there look at that look look at this cross magnificent crosses there so somewhere on this section with the cross stitch I'm going to put this because that is absolutely wonderful so that will be either put there or there I'm not quite sure yet maybe there would be nice and this is the sketchy bit there you go the texture and we've got the texture because we've got thick wool here against the fine silk um, floss here. And different sizes, we've got large ones against small ones here, here, there. So we've got the, the elements there, the principles of design going on there. Now, this page isn't finished either. Goodness yes, knows what I'm going to put on there. But this is the thing with what we do. It, it really is a progression of an idea. You start off thinking, well, oh, it's going to be a nice, modest little stitch book just for reference. And suddenly, it explodes and grows into something completely different. Now, the needle weaving is the next page. And this is lovely to do as well. 
right so all we're going to do you see it here it's in blocks so it's under and over under and over on oh, what is that four strands is it one two three four five strands there I'm going to use four and we're going to make imagine we're now making a little frame on a fabric so we're making a little loom I should say on our fabric oops now this knot as you can see needs to be a bit more substantial because it's going to take a little bit of tugging so there we are look that's that's quite a large knot there so let's start again and just for a while I'm going to keep my finger on that now you could also maybe put a little bit of glue there just to keep it in place or a little bit of sellotape that you take off later you take the sellotape off later so we're making a little loom now on our fabric so that's the first warp and the warp thread goes that way lengthwise okay so warp goes that way so we're going to do another one we're going to do four of these so one two Um, four. Now I've got mine evenly spaced at the moment. You don't have to. I always think it's like when you're learning to draw. Um, you make marks. You learn to make marks first. You get to know your pencil, and how, what you can do with your pencil, and this is basically the same. Right now, you see that? That's our loom. Now, uh, we don't want to pull it too tight because if you pull it too tight, you're going to buckle the fabric. I'll just let that finish. And then we're going to come in. Uh, I'm going to start at the top, so I'm just twisting that around. Come in from the top like this. And all you're going to do is weave. Now, this is the weft thread. The thread that goes across is called the weft. So warp goes down and weft goes across. So you're going over, under, over and under. Easy. Okay. First row. So you finished on an under so you're going to start on an over the thread comes over the warp here and it goes over under over over and under there you go so you've now done two so now you might be thinking mm, yeah i'm getting bored now so you finished on an under there so your next thread's going to be over now, I don't want to make a whole block of this. I just want to do a little experiment. So I'm going now to do this over and under on just two. Over and under. There we go. On two. So there's one of our blocks there. You see that block there? One, any one of those blocks. Now you might think, hmm. Right, let's see what happens if now I just go across and do it over maybe three. So you finished on and over. So you've got to go under. Over and under. And that's all you're doing. Over and under. Over and under. lovely and now we're just going to try and make some shapes so I'm going to come over here this side now and just pull them apart a little bit and then we've gone under over so turn around and go under and over of course you don't have to even have them close you could 
space them so you're exposing the fabric and you're making shapes and then let's try we'll leave that one now and let's do the two middle ones so there we go under you have to work with a minimum of two when you do this where are we that's um so that was that's now under and over there we go you might want to leave it like that so that's as far as i'm going with that and that one now i'll show you the piece that go where we'll go there somewhere. This was my inspiration. If you can see that, it's tree. It's shrub. It's a shrub, and it's just coming into bloom there. But you can see the shapes here of the twigs. You can see the shapes there that the twigs have made. That was my inspiration. And this is what I actually did with that inspiration. So, move that there. That will go there. So that will go there. And this will go somewhere here, I think. I'm not too sure. I don't want to cover that up because I've got the trees here. It also reminds me of trees, which basically, they're all branches, aren't they? So I might pop that beside that. I need to spend some time later just playing around. I want to keep those trees there because if you look at here, look, you can see the shapes here between the branches, very much like here, we have here. Now the and the last one is the chain stitch. Right, so we have chain there in a row and underneath we have single chain stitch but the stitch is exactly the same once again knot in your thread nice knot that one can come out you see that so it's a nice loose knot in from the back like that now just decide the length that you want it and I'm going to make it just quite a long one so you can see it and then you're going to go back hold, hold that down with your thumb hold it down like so so it's not wriggling about and it's quite you could it's quite um, secure there under your thumb now you're going to take your needle back into the same hole okay and bring it out the length that you want your stitch so your needle is straight and you're going to bring it out where you want to finish your stitch so you see that and then still keep your thumb holding down the thread now very carefully let go and slowly pull it and there is your first chain right now to make the actual chain you're just going to repeat that into the same hole I'll just see if I can make that bigger again into the same hole as long as you want it keeping the thread under your thumb secure like so there you go, your second chain. I'm going to open these just a little bit so you can see. The black isn't working too well there. There you go, so you can see the chain. Do one more into the hole, same hole, as long as you want it. Keep your needle nice and straight. Keep your thumb holding down the thread. And pull it. 
and there you go that's lovely and to finish off you just take your needle into the back and secure it and that's that I'm not actually going to do that because I want to just make this a bit longer off camera so I'm going to cut it maybe there now the daisy stitch is lovely absolutely lovely and you're going to do the single you're going to do the single stitches there but in a daisy shape so what I'm going to do is come up from the center the center of your flower like that center of the flower and you're just going to do exactly the same as you do oh sorry <laughs> oh right off screen there you're just going to do exactly the same as you did for these chains so hold it down into the same hole as long as you want it that's it first petal and then this time though you're going to take the needle in the other side of the chain where you finish where you finish the chain so you've got a tiny little stitch now over the end of that chain and there you go your first daisy your first petal I mean and then you're going to go back into the same hole and do exactly the same into the middle there you go you're still holding down that thread pull it second petal take the needle the other side of the end of the petal so you're making a tiny little stitch there smash in now I'm opening those so you can just see what's going on there I'll do that again I'm going to have to cut that off that's in my way right and then I'm going to do that again into the center I might get away with just one more and then in the center you could put a French knot or you could put a bead you could put a cross stitch you could put whatever you like and there you go that is your lazy daisy or your daisy stitch or you might know it by another name so that's going to go there I'm going to leave that needle there because I'm going to the thing is I'm, I'm going to leave the needle there because I'm going to do a few more that is really nice to do and then I might put uh, white or maybe red a French knot in the middle of that now my sketch I'm going to call it my sketch here is there you go is based on this now this picture from the same book that I've been using the whole time this has got five one two three four five petals on there so I have put five on mine each of my daisies here I've got five petals there might actually be one with four I can't see it well perhaps not but I did think there was one there with four unless I went back and um, added one yeah I I can't see it at all so I must have gone back and put the fifth one in but that was my inspiration for this and the middle part here these are all French knots French knots and chain stitch here to give it added interest they're like stems here and down here and some herringbone here for this effect actually I think that might be upside down <laughs> yeah that's upside down yeah so we've got herringbone here for this effect down here um, and I just brought that up here just to give it a little bit of balance so that is it and I'm deliberately leaving this here because I love that I just love that frayed bit there 
Now I'm just going to do a very quick flip through to show you how far I've got. I think the inside is now finished but I'm not sure, never too sure when to finish. Now a lot of this will be personal to you. So things like this from an, a vintage magazine and that is hand sewn. That's actually some um, laced running stitch here and some satin stitch which I've cut out and I put there just to pretty the page up so that is our running stitch over here and that is a piece you might have seen this before if you remember the last tiny book of stitches that we did going back over a year ago that was from the front cover so that is mainly slow stitch running stitch around here with a few beads um, and a little bit of blanket stitch but mostly running stitch this is transfer I like that um, it's a photocopy of a transfer and these are vintage as well I bought a load of these from eBay they're really too nice to use so I photocopied that you'll see a lot of those in a minute here we have the blanket stitch with the pinwheels and the blanket stitch around here a little motif I've just put there because I wanted to and this um, the inspiration of the hollyhocks I don't know if the two crosses, crosses were there when I showed it to you before I've added some sequin washi tape there you can make your own washi tape with double sided sellotape and it's quite a nice thing to do here we have herringbone right you've seen this before this is from the vintage sewing magazine and close up you can see well maybe you can't on there let me um that flower those two flowers there are made up are sewn with herringbone stitch and that is my interpretation of this really and that is a paper flower underneath i bought a big bag of these at a craft show i think it was in the excel center um well it wasn't last year was it the year before and I put a herringbone here and because we've used the pinwheels already I put a pinwheel there and just done a little bit of weaving in there and it's on lace another photocopy from a flower and that because I liked it which is running stitch and here we have the inspiration for that no surprises there no no big changes there We'll make this page a bit smaller so close your eyes there we go the feather stitch i've added a band here with feather stitch along there and some slow stitch there and some buttons just held down and more um motifs there yeah and that reminded me this one reminded me of feather stitch here the way it just well it actually grows up I like that so I've put a little piece there a little piece there and some there this as well is the same one of the flowers from the ones I was telling you about a little while ago the yellow flower here there's another one here and that has got the herringbone on it running stitch lace running stitch around there and a couple of crosses and in the center there's some sort of button that's a button and i put a bead on top so that's that page just going to move it up slightly there and some washi tape along there so it's beginning to look a bit like um i always want to say christmas but of course that's gone it's beginning to look a little bit like a journal a junk journal so i've had to stop myself straying too far into that area um but obviously it has taken on a life of its own so i'm making no apologies washi tape there just to pretty up the page inspiration the fern here the french knots really easy to do don't forget how easy they are to do little motif i've stuck there and the inspiration for the french knots here i did actually start out making that into a flower and it just seemed to 
take a heart shape so I thought I'm going to leave that because I know I had that shape there um, hidden away somewhere so I've left that as it is and not rounded it off but I like that and it's a lovely texture hear that? lovely so these are your writing pages your note paper notes here as well and there is the finished um, another finished French knot that is the actual finished sample that was just to show you how this looks so this is the finished sample and there is the inspiration tucked a little bit of lace there just to pretty up the edge um, what have we got here ah yeah so cross stitch I think everybody or most people are familiar with cross stitch seems to be one of the popular stitches and you can use this for slow stitch don't forget slow stitch is about mindfulness as well so really although traditionally running stitch is the slow stitch for mindfulness purposes and our slow stitching we have widened the horizons a bit and we use any stitch so don't think you have to stick to the running stitch you don't have to do that so any cross stitches out there feel free to join us because you can use your cross stitch mindfully and a slow stitch and here we go here your example don't need to tell you little little um, motif and this was a bookmark that I did some years ago and I always felt it was too nice to use and of course over time it got very tatty so I've um, deconstructed it and I thought that goes just nice there and it matches the flowers here which were from that vintage magazine so that those there are the cross stitch flowers and that is the design from the motifs and that I just found uh, there's another one somewhere I think it's in my one here that I've got here the other ones in there a little bit of washi tape just to match the colors here to sort of coordinate it a little bit and that is that isn't on this page that was on the photocopy that's on the original there there we go our lovely cross our lovely crosses flowers here that monstrosity I decided to keep him but it gives me the heebie-jeebies I don't like it <laughs> I don't like it and I think if I were to use this I might cover it up with anything but that it's just so weird I can't get over it a little bit of washi tape and the cross the example here and this the whole lot of blue here is blue washi tape And possibly one of my favorites the needle weaving here I do love this but to love it so much I'm going to enlarge this one did that enlarge wasn't looking right so here we go the instructions up here here we go the, the example there and this if I can find something narrow what have I got here the narrow oh I know this crochet hook this it stands free look it stands free of the background there I did put some lace behind there but I thought no I'm getting too much into the the junk journaling not that there's anything wrong with that because I love junk journaling um, but this is primarily about how to do your stitches so there isn't that lovely it always reminds me of trees when you see them like that very tree-ish and I've put a little bit of fern there now I'm sure most of you will remember this. Was it from um, Picasso's Rooster? Used it, we used it for the tail, I think. Um, oh, I know what. I, I just need to go back. That's reminded me here. Sorry for jumping about. This piece here is just an inch wide, and it's le um, different leaves. Leaves, sorry, leaves up here, and I've actually sewn on the paper there in uh, running stitch in twisted running stitch there and I've added a little bit of lace and some sequins there's the sequins there 
and some lace there and I'm using that as washi tape and that is what I mean about making your own washi tape you don't have to buy it you can make it but well sorry about that but um something about that reminded me that was strange now this is your pocket that is the pocket here and with that pocket you could put your bits and pieces in there this is where I got the embroidery stitches from I've got this this in booklet form and I photocopied them all and I've cut out the ones that we use and the ones that, that are over just stick in there and these are some of the motifs that are over just pop those in there as well there we go nice little page there and that was easy I think I explained how to do that earlier on um, and this the twigs with the beautiful shapes here between the twigs the beautiful shapes here between the branches and I hope the beautiful shapes here inspired by these and I've woven just to give the twig effect here I've woven some leather cording around there I deliberately left that long and that one there de deliberately left them loose once again I've edged it with some vintage from the same magazine um, some vintage embroidery there or photocopy and some more washi tape and the chain stitch right let's move that down just going to change the screen again there we go dance of daisies is is what the um article for where these were taken from was was called so it was actually a dance of daisies but i couldn't get the a in so dance of daisies here and here are the daisies done exactly the same way and this was definitely 1962 this this one definitely 1962 i put one over there and um that's the little sample piece there and look how pretty that is isn't that gorgeous that one there left that lace uh, i've left that loose put some lace underneath as washi tape and I, I like that page i really like that page and that is the end that's the last page and there's a spare now the next one. thing to do is to think about the cover well i've gone back to my cover i'm going to do the cover the same way as this one let's see if i can get them both in the same way now this one is slightly smaller but i'm still going to do it this way and i've taken my inspiration from how these were worked and i'm going to do this one the same um, even keeping to the same size which has made them a bit crowded now here we go this is the one for our new journal and as you can see there's no space there at all i nearly made them smaller but i thought no i'm going to have them touching with just a hint of the burlap or the hessian behind it now these these stitches were done freehand it was just i drew an s on was it this one no it wasn't this one this is a plique so i cut the s out on fabric i put it down tacked around it and then used the stitches that we've we've done that we've done in our booklet use the stitches around here now <clears throat> i'm not going to show you how to do these because you will probably want to do yours differently and you have all the techniques now the, all the stitches in the book for helping you or showing you how to do it this was cut out from a cushion <laughs> so i've now got h s and t missing from merry christmas on the front of a christmas cushion yeah i know it's terrible isn't it i have actually drawn them in and do you know what nobody although it's locked down so i have to say there's only been two people come in he did not notice <laughs> unless they're quite polite i like to think they're polite so that's a plique 
with just over stitching here which you could call side was running stitch cross stitch um cross stitch on these are on binka and ada and this is now this was the only one that i used um a diagram from for, uh, from a, a sewing magazine and I haven't copied it slavishly because of copyright I have altered it quite a bit so if you feel that you need you need um, to copy or you need guidance and instruction do look on the internet and um, your magazines you're bound to have them but believe me it's so easy to do freehand apart from the S's which are curved everything else oh and the c but even the c is based on a square and they're so easy to do just using the stitches that we've used this one is slightly different this these are different because it's woven and i've got this piece of green there this piece of green there to make the dot of the eye that's why that's stuck there but all i did for this <clears throat> I'm just going to push that out of the way now. All I did for that was on this piece of fabric here, and this was a piece of lace. We used this before for Aubrey Beardsley. For our Aubrey Beardsley project, I believe we used some of this. And this was from the same piece of fabric that that is from. And this was done for Aubrey Beardsley, but I didn't use it. I used something else. So you're probably you might probably think, oh yeah, I did see that. I do remember that now. Aubrey Beardsley, and that's what was left over. So all I did here was a little bit of weaving, just in and out, like so, with a big needle, a needle that's going to take the thickness. Of your thread or your ribbon and that's it that's all I did and it's such a nice thing to do can you see that just through the ladder there so on um, on that one I mount on that one there I mounted this on lace uh, sorry on felt that's felt I put that on felt and I did the blanket stitch over the sides of the ladder so if you think of that as being a ladder I did the blanket stitches over the side of the ladder there they are there and just decorated this with running stitch and French knots and a few cross stitches around the edge well this side anyway and the dot of the eye was the pinwheel now let me see this one which isn't finished yet it's done basically the same blanket stitch running stitch and that's it on that one and I will do the same the pinwheel with this on the green here for the dot so that's as far as I've got at the moment what I'll do and now. it's finished here it is cover complete inside complete just going to take the bow off this was a headband so that is the finished cover I'm leaving the back as it is and um, there you go I've added some slow stitch along here and all the way round here and here and down there I've sewn these on or I actually machine sew them all on and then I've gone back over here some of the edges with that's herringbone um, herringbone here too and cross stitch there and I've added um, a pinwheel there I did try the fabric dot like I did on my cover but it didn't look too well it looked out of place so I've added that there and it goes well with that one so that is completed now I hope you enjoyed that it's a lot bigger and the video is probably a lot longer than I intended but um, I hope you find it useful I enjoyed doing it I hope you did 
thank you for staying to the end um, and thank you for all your comments as well and your likes I do appreciate it and good luck with what's going on out there and best wishes and lots of good health to you all and I'll be back within a week or so please take care